Hello everyone and welcome to another Windows Phone 7 video here on Channel 9. My name is Yohai Kiyadi, I'm a technical evangelist working on the Windows Phone evangelism team. And with me today, uh, very pleased to have Albert and Anand. Please introduce yourself. Well, thank you for having us. Um, sure. My name is Albert Shum. I lead the Windows Phone design team. Uh, I've had a pleasure of working on Windows Phone for the last uh, year. Um, our team is really excited about what we've been doing. Um, and Nod and I are here today to talk about some of the things we talked about at Mix, but also explain some of the designs we've gone through, uh, especially in terms of how we thought about uh, the hubs and how you might uh, kind of build your apps and, and your experience. And no, Nod, what are you doing on All our right, team? So I'm Nod Freilink. I'm an experienced designer on the uh, Windows Phone team. And um, I am you know, excited to um, kind of walk through how we designed parts of the Windows Phone experience. Um, specifically the, the people experience. Right. So as you guys probably understand, it's not our usual API session this time. And we're going to talk about a little bit about the design. We're going to drive a little bit deeper than what we had at Mix. Right. And the main idea is for, for all of you there is to uh, you know, take inspiration, take into account what we were thinking uh, about when we design. Uh, when you guys design that, we. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, it's we. Yes, we. we. It's when we built uh, uh, when we were Windows Phone, and maybe you could, you know, take it to something else completely different, but, you know. Yeah. And, you know, to that point, um, we talked a lot last time about the design language we call Metro and, and what are some of the inspiration behind that, and hopefully um, we're posting this online also so you can actually uh, see it for yourself uh, in more detail uh, by, uh, when we get a chance. But really, I, I think this is about uh, a way to share some of the thinking behind the design too, not just the design language, but hey, exactly. building a, a great app, what does it mean? What are the things that you should think about? Yep. And Nod's going to uh, kind of dissect that and we'll kind of you know, discuss a bit more about some of the, the design thinking that we took. Cool. So just yep. a second before we start, uh, for those of you who don't, don't know, this is, uh, this is the? The Metro uh, design uh, system, right. and we're going to post it online. It's, uh, it kind of explains the design language uh, that we use in the Windows Phone. And actually, we're going to talk more about that uh, in, in different experiences we're building, too. Right. So for this video post, we'll have the link to download uh, uh, the, exactly. the booklet yeah. itself. And we have a link to the mix uh, video, which we covered in right. length, right. the Metro design. So Ned, All you right. Start? So um, uh, basically, one of the most important things for us uh, in designing Windows Phone was really thinking through um, our users. We love our users, and uh, we really want them to love our experience. So um, one of the most um, uh, important aspects for us was to um, to look at many many users across the world and gather um, what they want, what what, um, what they like about uh, their phone, their pain points, uh, their their lives basically really understand them deeply. And um, for the for the Windows Phone experience, we uh, really started focusing on um, uh, our personas Anna and Miles. Um, they're life maximizers. They're husband and wife, and they uh, they have a lot going on in their lives. They're really juggling all kinds of um, work and personal activities. And um, you know, as we started thinking about the, the social and, and people experience on the phone, uh, we really think about their lives first and um, uh, the things, the people they connect with during their day. Um, uh, you know, they they communicate with each other, uh, staying up to date on on, on their uh, their closest friends and family. Um, and so we really think through uh, their day-to-day -day lives and sort of create stories around. Uh, what you know? What the Windows Phone experience yeah. means uh, within, within really, their life. I think keeping connected was also yes. another uh, key part of the experience that we exactly. thought was, hey, I have all these people. How do I keep track of them? Yes. So, so, um, so, so really thinking through um, sort of scenarios and, and and life experiences of these of these people of these personas, and um, uh, another very important part of our um, experience was to think through. Uh, the red threads. We've, I think we've mentioned those at the, at the mix right. uh, presentation also. Um, basically, uh, some of the core experience uh, pieces or pillars that we, we designed uh, Windows Phone uh, and Metro uh, on top of. Um, and so what, as we were thinking initially through the, um, the first sort of sketches of, the, of that uh, people experience on the phone, the social experience, uh, what does that mean? Um, you know, the, one of the red threads is around personal. So um, we really thought about like, uh, how can we make this, you know, the, the, the social the people experience personal on the phone? Um, so, like the people that I care about most, uh, I can put on my start screen, for example. Um, and another aspect was we want to we want the idea of me on the phone. Like I should be, you know, on the phone. I should be able to quickly share my 
uh, my thinking during the day and, uh, and things like that. So um, really making the phone yours, making it very personal. So for the people experience, that's uh, some of you know, the favorites on, favorite people on start, basically. It's, it's my phone, so it basically exactly. reflects my exactly. way of life. Yeah, so um, the, the start tiles really help the user sort of um, uh, customize their, their Windows Phone experience, and you know, the, yeah, the, I think the people tiles are great for that. At, from the mix session, and, and one of the feedbacks was, wow, how do we take advantage of this um, start experience? And I think as an application, uh, that's something we used to think about, like, how, what would you want exactly. to share with your users, bubble up, yeah. bubble up uh, in, in these uh, what we call live tiles. Yeah. So, And so um, another important red thread for the experience was um, relevant. So we really try to make the people experience relevant. And an example of that is um, uh, our, our recent experience, basically, within the, the people hub. So we really uh, showcase, and, and in our initial sketches, we thought about this idea of like, well, the people I just talked to, and you know, the people I communicate with should be should be right there, right? Um, so make them easily accessible, make this uh, this hub experience, panorama experience, really relevant when I go into it. Um, and uh, at the same time, we wanted our um, social experience to be, um, or the people experience to be very connected and alive. So. Um, we always want you know our, our users to know what their um, what their friends are up and family are up to, and, and sort of integrate that sort of really live connected experience um, in the uh, in the people hub also. Um, so I think during the mix uh, introduction, uh, Albert also kind of talked about um, some of the uh, development of the Metro design language and, and visual design, and so there are lots and lots of um, iterations done to kind of really fine tune and tweak uh, the. Yeah, what Metro means, right? And I think that's a key point that we want to emphasize that Metro is a set of principle. It's um, in some ways, we, you know, we, we chat a lot. Wow, is this the design? Uh, when we design Metro, we want to make sure that uh, it was grounded in a flexible language. And when I say language, it's literally uh, not going to walk you through. It's a it's a structure that allows you to write your own stories. And we really want to keep on emphasizing that. Metro is a foundational language. It's up to you to make sure that you create an application that's really expressive to your audience. Uh, and, and it's complementary. So that's a key point that we're going to keep on emphasizing uh, throughout this journey we're having. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and as we've seen through, uh, through Mix and through some of the demos that we showed at Mix, is we had some applications that are really uh, Metro-like. And right, right. they feel like they are part of the phone. Right. Yeah. But we have also some experience that are completely Right. They feel great on the phone, but they are completely exactly. right. looks and feel different right. than exactly. the regular metro. Yeah, and there are some great examples of that on the phone too. So it's part of like the office hub and the uh, the the games hub that we have on our phone. Kind of like has this you know metro feel, but it, it definitely extends into some other uh, branding and, and visuals as yep. well. Um, so some of the me metro principles that we really started um, working towards within designing the people experience and the and the hub for the, for people was um, sort of keep it really clean and light. Uh, and uh, really celebrate, you know, the content and the typography um, within the experience. And um, uh, as part of it, also just you know, keeping uh, thinking about motion and, and really bringing this experience to life using using motion in the um, in the in the UI. Um, I think I think for us, it's really um, about creating a very um, alive and, and delightful experience. Uh, motion can emphasize. Um, um, or hint at certain uh, elements in the experience that you otherwise might not be able to see, like on, in the hub, for example. Um, and I think that it's very important to strike a balance between, and, and that's why we, t we really tweak our motion. We have you know, motion designers on the team between like, you know, what's, what's too much, what's too little motion. So really kind of um, you know, use it in a way that's, that's subtle, but also. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting that uh, the way we use motion across the experience where in some ways we also use motion to help you navigate like hey exactly. you know I'm coming into a application yep. and and but also going out of an application right. that flow motion can it's almost like you know it could riff and drive you and, and help you flow into different in and out of the experiences uh, in, a, in a more seamless way so that's a that's a key part of how, how we've been using motion yep so. exactly um, so um, as we started then really um, designing, you know, aligning with those metro, um, metro guidelines and principles um, within our sketches, and uh, you can see some of the sketches, you know, uh, on the slide also, uh, we, we really started iterating and, and, and tweaking the, the interaction design, and so the sort of the hub uh, concept came in, into, into play here, and um, you can see we kind of, in the final design, we moved some of the elements around, and we really started optimizing the, 
the interaction and the visual and uh, um, as well as the motion yeah. for, for this experience. And that brings to another principle that we really get a, get a chance to dive into was uh, kind of fierce reduction, only what you need. Um, uh, as you kind of see by this layout is, you know, content is a really important piece. At the same time, um, you have to manage how much information you present to the user. It's a, it's a constant struggle, right? To get, we want a lot of things on the screen, and at the same time, you don't want to overwhelm uh, the experience. And in some ways, for people, when you have lots of people, how do you actually manage that? Uh, we spend a lot of time iterating on, uh, you know, like, like Nod shows, uh, from just concepting wireframes, uh, looking at visual layouts, creating that balance. And it's a bit of an art, but, you know, if you're writing your app, you really try to think about that. How, how do you create that balance where it's, you want to present as much information as possible, at the same time, you don't want to overwhelm the user. Yes. So less is more. Is exactly. Well, yeah, Mies sure, was right. got it right. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so. Yep. Um, and so another important aspect for, for us is, you know, t working toward the implementation, then, is, of course, the specking, um, all the elements of the experience, and really making sure that when it, you know, when it goes from some of the design ideas and, and sketches into the um, development process that we, we really built this, uh, you know, in, in a way that was, it was envisioned. Um, and that, that includes, you know, the uh, placement of elements on the, on, the, on the screen as well as uh, different t uh, touch targets. You know, it's, we really have to think about the phone and the, and the touch experience as yeah. well. Yeah. So, so why don't we, like, I don't know if we try to dissect one of those, but let's see, I mean, what are the, like, principal guidelines for, maybe for touch, because it's a little bit different, right? I mean, in touch, we are... The touch, the hit, the hit area is a little bit bigger than the actual control, yes. right? And and I see several different elements there, and I guess their interaction and the way they move across in and out are a little bit different. Yes. Maybe you can take us through that. Um, well, I would say that um, we we have some really great touch guidelines actually in our um, I think posted on on the developer website, and um, I think it, it's really important to think through like wh like what are sort of the the minimal sizes of elements for for uh, for touch and and really optimize. Um, uh, the, the design and the visual design for, for the finger touch experience. Um, also think about the other you know, components of the hardware, the, the back button and, and the search experience um, yeah. um, as, as you're kind of designing. Yeah, uh, especially when you're designing and touch, there's a couple of assumptions you should you know, try to make or play around with that hey, you should assume, should we assume everything is touchable? Like touch, what does that mean? Should I, should every piece of content, every pixel on there implies that you should be able to interact with it in some ways. And, and we, we did a lot of studies, like, sometimes you want to create the affordance where, hey, touch me, like, you know, where uh, you, that content, that picture, you should be able to touch on it and something happens. And, and you have to kind of think through some of these, uh, these uh, ways to, for, for people to interact. And touch doesn't imply that it's a very rigid way to design, actually. It actually frees you up. It does. Um, and, and that's also the problem. You have so, many free, so much freedom. I should make this touch. I should make, you know. And, and you really have to have a, a set of uh, assumptions that you want to stick with and be consistent. Yep. Uh, so that, at the end of the day, uh, you really want the user that goes to your application or come out of your application there's a consistent way that, hey, these are things that you want to touch and enable a certain action, and it's repeatable, and ultimately it's, it's, it's delightful, but also habitual. You kind of start yeah. mem remembering, oh, if I touch on this contact, this picture, yeah, exactly. it actually gets me into their card. Yeah, um, so I was just going to mention that, yeah, we, that's an, a, a good example of like how something like that's consistent, and users kind of learn over time. Every time I see someone's name, and you know, it, it's touchable, and then I go see their you know, contact details, or I'm able to call them uh, right away. Or yeah, and it's so very time. different than, you know, before where everything's icons and buttons yes. and yeah. touch this button, touch me, touch me. Like we actually assume that the you, the full display is touch, and, uh, and that implies a different set of uh, design parameters. And you should think about that um, more precisely. I think. Yeah. But it's implied that you probably want to think through its functionality rather than uh, you know the specific elements yeah. or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. And the nice thing about that, or so through the in the entire phone, whenever you see a person contact card, basically, which is this picture, right. the avatar, mm -hmm. right? Whenever you click on it, you'll probably get the same experience. Yeah, right. That's right. And so, um, sort of in the final, um, the final hub, uh, you know, as, as, we, as we are, um, as we have it on the phone now, you can really see um, a lot of these different principles, the, 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 the red threads, and really thinking through our, our users. Um, so we have um, a section on the phone. Um, in the hub experience, uh, with recents, where you know where, where all my recent people are, we have um, 
uh, we aggregate a lot of um, uh, contacts from various sources uh, and networks into the, um, the contact list. And um, we also um, you know, sort of aggregate a lot of um, different sources and, and social updates from, from, uh, from, from network sources like Facebook and, and Windows Live. Um, so yeah, and I, I would say, you know, when we have, when we were at Mix, uh, there was a lot of like, hey, how do you know? You know, it's a hub. It's like it's very visual and it's very you know the panoramic and wow, it's such a big canvas. At the same time, what do we do with that canvas? And I think showing the people hub is. You really have to think about um, presenting the information in a more of a what I call curated way. That hey, you know, it's about your favorites, it's about recent, it's about lists. Like, try to structure it so that when you go through this panorama, you also have a sense of uh, where you are. And that's uh, that's one of the challenges with panorama. You have such a large canvas, helping right. the user understand uh, what what does this area do, what does this area do, and, and create that curation. Uh, in a thoughtful way. So yeah. assuming someone will build his own panorama or will be will provide means to do it somewhere in the future. So would you say like I would uh, I can put like you know a hundred pages in the panorama which would be maybe too much or you know four is the optimal or whatever. Do we have like any guidance around that or it's just you know try and error or whatever applicable to a given application? Yeah. I, w I would say right now it's uh, we've been very open, and we're trying to get feedback that it is a canvas. Yeah. Uh, that you know there's there's a fine point where that you know that canvas gets too long, and, and you know you don't want to keep scrolling. You know get fatigued. Well, oh my finger, it's getting sore. Uh, <laughs> you you want to at the same time be efficient, and that balance of like hey find the information and and the hub is allow you to present a lot of information, yeah. and because it's touch you can ac access it quickly. So I, I think that it's creating that balance and, and it's. Back to the the idea of creating something, trying it out, and iterating, and, and, and I think that's touches. That's why these great tools. Uh, you really have to try it out and, and, and see, make it true to your application and what's consistent. Yeah, so. exactly. I would say that we've we've within our seven experience, um, uh, we've we have um, kept the panoramas, you know, fairly condensed and really thought through what are the the most, you know, what how can we aggregate from 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 different um, experiences into this one. One sort of hub experience, and then um, think about like what are the the most important elements we really need to service um, and at that top level right. um, of the experience. So it's more again, it's more of the functionality of the hub itself, what you represent, right. rather than the means which we call panoramic, which is just yeah, control, exactly. right. but it's just again, just a it's just a means to an end, exactly. right? and the end is what we are looking for. Here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and back to you, a good application does that. It helps people, you know, get to what they want to do. Uh, and 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 not get bogged down in um, just the visual. I think the visual is really important to help uh, people navigate, but also make it delightful. And and we got to make sure we keep that uh, you know, balance. Yeah, and we also really tried you know with the with the people social experience. We really tried to create one you know one place where, where a user can go and really um, you know find out what's up with their people or contact people. They don't have to go to different you know, places or applications right. for that. It's yeah. it's all really nicely um, combined in, it, it is, right. in this you know aggregated experience. And basically, at the, at this version it's it's pretty much uh, controlled by by us by the phone, and it's not an open ended where you can plug whatever right social right. element you write yeah. into it. Yes. So um, now you have your Windows Phone uh, Seven with you, right? One yes. of our prototype. Yep. And it's connected to the to the PC where I basically can present. Yep. So, so walk every, us through. Everything I do here gets replicated um, over there. So yes, I walk you through the experience. And um, um, after I unlock the device, um, we'll get to the, the start tiles, basically, that, I, uh, that we've already seen in many demos. And um, as you can see, um, uh, the, the, the start tiles really give me access to, to um, a lot of different experiences. Um, but um, in this case, I'm, I'm specifically kind of walking through some of the Social and people elements on the phone, and right, and you can um, see by the the people tile that we talked about, it's really bubbling up um, your content. Yeah, it's, it's really alive. It's alive yep. with uh, well, boy, you got a lot of peeps there, not exactly. And um, then um, you know, I, I I pinned like my wife up here. She's right there on my start screen. Um, so let's go into the people hub for a minute um, and talk about the design a little bit more in details. So. Um, as you can see, um, uh, um, an important aspect of the People Hub is the uh, recent experience. Um, so these are all the people that I recently communicated with. If I send them an SMS or, um, or um, I call them, uh, they show up here. And um, 
uh, as I move this, and uh, I think that supports the kind of the the relevance. Yeah, the relevancy. Um, when we talked about the red threads, yeah. like, you know, being personal, being on the start um, experience, but also making it relevant. And being recent, we thought that was a really relevant. Uh, first thing you want to know, hey, who do I just talk to? It's probably the person that is closest to you know that you want to keep in contact exactly. with. And I want to make sure I could get back to them quickly. Yep. And then these uh, the the pictures for these people also come. You know, of the social network sources, so they're always relevant and, and the latest sort of like profile pictures that that they posted there. Um, and as I'm kind of navigating around this hub, you'll see that um, the the um, the different layers of the experience. So as I'm um, as I'm moving the the panel around, you'll see the the different elements kind of moving at different speeds, which really gives gives you the idea of uh, of depth and really um, make, makes the the panel come alive. Um, so when I pan over, you'll see the um, the the all list, which basically shows me all the contacts that that I have on my phone, all my peeps, right. and um, right on top is um, is my own my own um, experience, my own profile, and um, and that gets to you know we went from recent to all, and that was one of the things about curating the the experience for your panel that you're designing. Hey, think through about hey, what are the secondary things that you want, or is it is it really about the most important thing, and then secondary things, or is it really about different types of information? Because uh, you know, for people, if you don't find a person on your recent, you probably need to go find find uh, it all there, yeah. all there. So that's and this is yeah. basically aggregating all the content that you have from all the sources. That's right. right. That's right. And uh, there's a couple ways to quickly jump around. We have um, yep. a quick um, alpha alphabet um, way to jump to another letter and, and find a contact that way. Or you can actually uh, use the search button and then uh, be able to you'll be able to find. A, a contact that way. Yeah, and that's a powerful way to quickly go through. You know, if you have lots and lots of people. Right. I notice there's like there's no such. You don't have to type on the search box or so just natural. Right. Uh, all the different components of the phone come together. Exactly. Yeah. At multiple exactly. places. And so here on the uh, people experience, we've actually um, chosen to to add a control or uh, sort of to add a, a contact right there uh, on the hub experience, and, and that's something that's that's done in in some of the panoramas. Um, yeah, so like it also, one of the things is we can actually create content right there. Um, yes. And that's what panel can also do. It's not just a way to present or consume information or get, you can actually create. So That's right. So um, let me just open um, a contact card real quick. Um, so this is an example of, um, of one of the contacts. And um, in, the, in the contact card experience, we actually um, use the, uh, the pivot controls to kind of um, Combine both the the profile information to you know the, the, right. the main means to contact someone as well as the uh, the social updates for this person. Right, and hopefully you see the a key part. We talked about motion a bit before that the transition between um, uh, this contact, which is recent, which is Peter, uh, that there's a continuum between that picture, so that you see like oh okay, you you actually create an affordance for the user to understand that you still there's a continuous flow between one. Uh, experience through exactly. another. So the context remains through, yeah. yes. through the entire yeah. app. So they yeah. don't feel like you're jogging between one app to the other. Right, right. right. Exactly. So we, we try and maintain that context. So, yeah. And that's something really important to think about, especially when you have a big canvas like a panoramic. Uh, you might go into different experiences, but you got to help the user understand, hey, where am I? And, right. and then I just go somewhere else. Yep. Um, and so. Um, and everything has a. Again, everything has a motion of coming in and out. Right, right. That's a really important part of um, how we design experience. That's right. And so from the people tile going into sort of the people experience, you see the part of the header that kind of continues to you know, um, uh, express to the user where, the, where they are. And then um, some of the um, uh, subsections have titles here, too, that kind of you know, uh, give users an idea of what, what they're looking at in the experience and what they can do there, right? Um, and then the third sort of um, uh, big component of the of the people hub is uh, is the feeds, and um, uh, so the, the social updates and picture updates from um, from all my you know all the people that I'm uh, connected with, and um, yeah, and this is kind of um, the thread around connected, like when we talk about personal and then uh, relevant and then connected. I think having feeds also allows you to uh, make sure you understand, hey, what what else is going on uh, with my friends. And this feed allows you to automatically, not just you know, as not will show being connected, but also act on it. So hey, Rachel is doing something. Oh, maybe I should you know take action on that. Or exactly. Um, so yeah, so you can very easily um, comment, uh, add a comment uh, on the posting. 
um, or reply to something that shows up in the feeds. The other thing is um, if you know I really care about someone and uh, I feel like you know they're sort of part of my inner circle, um, uh, I can I can just easily put them on the start screen and get back to their their um, their contact information and you know instantly call or text them, or, um, as well as quickly see any status updates. So in this case. Um, I pin uh, you know, Peter Chin here to um, to my start screen, and now whenever there's a, a, a new social update, um, it actually shows that uh, right there on his uh, on his tile. Really cool. And uh, you know I can rearrange it and, and, and move him up if, if needed. And if he's really really important. If he's really really important, yes. So. Yep. So you have you know kind of the primary. Hey, I want to keep track of things that you know people I just talked to or uh, I was you know having conversations with. To hey, I want to find uh, someone I, I I need to find, and there's quick ways to do that. To hey, keep me connected to all your friends. So you start saying, wow, we're really creating. Um, it's not just a big canvas with a bunch of stuff. There's a there's a rationale uh, in terms of the user that helps you land, find the things that you really care about, but also if you want to do more, uh, the panel allows you to do that quickly. So right. yeah. it's, it's pretty much, and you mentioned it before, and it's important to mention again, as developers. Um, you can the user can actually pin your application right, right, right. Um, icon, which is the tile to the start menu, and yeah. then you can push a notification and information to it, and then Correct. clicking on that will launch your application, and then you can seamlessly go into your into your right. experience. Into basically. yeah, that context. Yeah, cool. that's right. So right. as you can see, that it's all about flow. You know how you flow from one experience to the other, and and, and make it more seamless. And that's a uh, key part of making sure your application feels like that too, uh, and it's uh, it's not easy. It's you know, it's, it's that's I me. Mean, that's the that's why you guys are here. It's it's uh, it's an art uh, in some ways, and, and it's a balance between uh, once again the, the keyboard balance that you want something that's delightful and useful at the same time, really functional. So, but it seems like great fun yeah. at the end of the day, right? Yes. And we certainly hope that you will, uh, uh, you know, have fun developing and building those experiences for the phone. Yeah, we're excited that, to see yeah. what's going to come this summer, and, and hopefully, uh, we're going to, you know, continue sharing uh, and, and some of the design behind Windows Phone Seven, and and but also we want to get more feedback on, on what you think you want to do with uh, Windows Phone Seven. Right. So, so this is great, guys. Thank you very much. Um, any any last words before we like end this video? Well, for me, it's Tip like the good word. yeah, <laughs> just let's see those apps. Uh, yeah, we, we're definitely um, design them. Build you know, them. we we actually we feel like you people out there, you're part of the design community. Uh, you're an extension of uh, of, of our uh, phone experience, and and what's going to make uh, Windows Phone Seven great is going to be the amazing apps uh, and the ideas that you guys have, and and how do we build that together? That's what we're really excited about. Right, Absolutely. cool. And we'll we will have a. a a list of resources attached to the video plus for all Great. the all the elements we have mentioned here right. through the videos, the the book, the other design elements, yeah. and so forth. Cool. So uh, thanks you uh, thanks again for watching us and stay tuned for more Windows Phone Seven videos here on Channel Nine. Mm -hmm.